Hey guys, this is the update 11.2 tutorial for Blade and Sorcery. I will be going through some of the new features with weapon design, such as the new handle pose system, as well as going over the other systems like damages in full detail. Please note that this tutorial will not show you how to set up the SDK. You will find out how to do that on the Discord server. First, what we want to do is we want to have our project open. Uh, make sure that it is on version 2020.3.33 F1 under Universal Render Pipeline. Then when that's done, we'll go to the Asset Dependencies folder and we'll find our example dagger. We'll place this in the scene, just push it to the side. I will be using this for sizing and scaling the weapon that we are creating. You can get a model from anywhere. You can make your own or you can get it from uh, website like Sketchfab. I'll be using my own personal dagger for this, which doesn't have a Thunder Road map, just to show you how to use the tool. I will place the dagger in the scene. As you can see, it is fairly large. So I'm going to shrink it down just to make sure that it fits the model. Please note that I will be using key bindings for moving and rotating. You can find this out if you Google it. You can also use these gizmos up here to do the same. Now that I have my model and I've scaled it, I want to make sure that the position is 0, 0, 0, just to make my life a little bit easier when I work with the scripts. Now that that's done, I want to make a new material in order to put textures on my weapon. As you can see here, I have six textures I'm going to be using, and because I have a roughness map, this means that I need to create a Autodesk interactive material. To do this, you can either get the base color and drag it onto the dagger and let go, or additionally, you can right click, create material, and I can name it whatever. Now they have the material, I wanna click on the shader, I want to go down to Universal Render Pipeline, Autodesk Interactive, Autodesk Interactive, and I have my Auto Inter Autodesk Interactive shader. I want to make sure that I enable all of these since I have all of these materials. However, if you do not have a roughness texture, you can go with the baseline Universal right Render Pipeline lit. Okay, so now that that's done, I'm going to drag the material onto the weapon, and I'm going to start dragging the textures accordingly. So I'm going to drag my base color, my normal map, my metallic map, my roughness map, and my emission map, as well as my ambient occlusion map. I will know the name of these as they are described in the name of the file. The emission is on uh, for the Autodesk Interactive uh, shader, however, it won't be when I convert it. Now that the textures are on, ensuring that the roughness texture is set to sRGB off, I'm going to right click my material, Thunder Road, Convert MOES, and it will create a MOES map for the Thunder Road lit shader. Please note that the shader is important and you will uh, be able to see why soon. Now that that is done, I am just going to remove the common dagger and I'm going to cr right click, create empty, and I'm going to name it the tutorial dagger. Once done, I'm going to make sure it's positioned in position 000, and I'm going to drag the sh mo m model onto this new game object. Now I'm going to add the item script to the tutorial dagger component. And as you can see, it's generated here. As you can see, when I generated this, it has created a holder point, a parry point, and a preview. Before I do this, I'm gonna go into the item script and I'm just going to change the item ID to something suitable as this will be needed as soon as the weapon is finished. Now, for the holder point, you want to make sure that the blue arrow points towards the floor when it is held in a holder 
such as an item rack or your hips and back. Because the arrow points to the floor, it means that I will rotate it so the blue arrow points towards the blade. And to make sure that it changes, make sure that it is set to local up here. I want to make sure that the axis point is set to the guard so that when it is attached to a holder, it is attached to the guard area. Once done, I will go to the parry point and I will just make it to the middle of the blade. And just in case, I will rotate it so the green arrow points outwards, as this is what the example dagger does. Once complete, we also have the preview script, and I will do this part at the end. Now that that is done, I want to right click the tutorial dagger, and we'll go on to the next thing. The next script is the parry target script. I want to add the component to parry target. And as you can see, it has created a line gizmo here. I want to make sure that this line fits up properly with the weapon. So I will enable the point to point transform and just make sure that it fits the length perfectly. This is used to make it so NPCs know how long your weapon is. If you have any questions about scripts that are used in this tutorial, you can click the little question mark button here and it'll take you straight to that page. Once done, I will right click again and I will add the collider group. So this will just be a main parent because under this I'm going to be adding two new collider group uh, game objects, one called blades, control D to copy and paste and F2 to rename and I'm going to change this one to handle. Once completed, I'm going to select them both and I'm going to add the Collider Group component. I will work with these in a moment, but first off, I want to make the colliders. So I will right click on the blades and I will create an empty and I'll just name it the ca uh, capsule. I will add a capsule collider. This is to make sure that the weapon collides with items. You can make this as complex as you like. But just remember, the more complex it is, the laggier it will be. So I just want to make sure that it's a simple capsule collider that won't cause any issues. Lots of primitive colliders like the box collider and capsule collider and sphere collider are genuinely pretty cheap. Um, it only gets expensive when you start using a lot of them or if you decide to move on to mesh colliders, which are quite expensive to use. Once I've added this collider, I will go to the material and I will change the material to blade. Next, I will go to handle and I'll just set up some primitive colliders for the handle. Make sure that the physics materials are accurate as they are the reason that the weapon makes sounds when you, for example, hit them against the surface or collide with an enemy. You can use the axis arrows to make sure that you can line up correctly.
Remember that you can mass select colliders to change their material along with their gizmo. For this, because I have it set to center, I can simply rotate it and copy paste. Then I want to make sure that the collider groups are correct. The collider material is correct. There we go. So now I have the handle and the blade set up correctly. Now I'm going to go back to the blades collider group and I'm going to generate an imbue mesh. This will create a pink imbue mesh based on the collider that I've created. This is to tell the game where the particles go when you try and imbue the weapon, along with the effects that go around it. It is now generating an imbue generated mesh, so I'll go to it and I will just untick the mesh renderer so the pink line does not show up. I'm going to go back to the collider group, find the imbue emission renderer, and I'm going to drag the dagger onto it, the actual model itself. This is to tell the game to increase the emission of this material. Please note that a one model weapon will only accept one imbue. It cannot accept multiple as it will start to flicker. With multiple mesh models, um, you can choose to imbue different meshes, but you cannot imbue the same mesh with two collider groups. That is why for the handle, I will not be doing the imbue emission and effect renderers. Now that that is done, I'm going to just close them up. I'm gonna right click, create empty, and I'm gonna create a damager. For damager information, you can select the little question mark here. First, I'm going to create the pierce damager. Because the pierce will be the blade, I'm going to drag the blades collider group onto the collider group. And because the blade is only one collider, I will be dragging that one collider to collider only. If you have a collider group with more than one collider, then this needs to be left to none. For pierce, we want to make sure that the direction is set forward so we can only stab when we throw forward. And I want to set the length to a number that is reasonable and the depth to be reasonable and make sure that the length is zero and it'll tell you that this damager is set up for piercing damage. I want to rotate it so it points upwards and make sure that it goes up to the tip of the weapon or slightly above it and I want the, the depth to reach sort of the end of the blade. The next one is then slash. For a dagger, a slash will have a length and it will be forward and back for the direction. However, the collider group and the collider only can remain the same. I will rotate the damager and I will move it down a little bit so it goes to the middle of the weapon. And now I want to change the length to a point to point transform to fit the blade. Once done, I also want to make sure that the penetration depth is around about the width of the blade. Slash is now done and set up for this weapon, so I will go on to blunt. Please note that this, is, this damager is set up for slashing damage as well. I now add the blunt, and because my, my blade won't be doing blunt damage, only the handle, I will remove the collider group only and I will move the handle collider group onto the collider group. Set the direction to all and make sure that the length and the depth are set to zero. I will then drag it down just to make it easier for organization. Now that the damages are done, I'm going to right click, create an empty and I'm going to add the handle. For the handle, it is now using a new hand pose system. So I'm just going to drag the handle down so you can grip this part of the weapon. Please note that axis length allows you to hold it with two hands, but also allows you to drag up and down the weapon. Because this is a dagger, I won't be doing this, and I'll just set this to zero. 
for touch radius. It is for how far away your hand needs to be to grab the weapon. And I'll set this to default to 0 0.1. Because we have our colliders, we can now calculate the reach, which it tells the AI how far away the weapon is from them. Now I will click update to new orientations to see the hand poses. Now that we have our hand pose, we can see that this looks genuinely correct. However, to make it more accurate, we can select this target hand pose ID for the this to handle small, and we can make it so it focuses more on this, and that should be set. And do the same for orient left. Currently, you can only hold it this way. So what we want to do is we want to duplicate it and rotate it 90 degrees on the z-axis or on the um, y-axis, sorry, to flip it around. Now we can hold it both ways. And what I want to do now is I want to duplicate it again and I want to rotate it on the z-axis to flip it upside down. So now we can hold the item up and down. Now we should have eight orientations, and you should be able to hold it correctly. If you'd like, you can also duplicate that and rotate it 90 degrees, so you can hold the weapon sideways. However, I will not be doing that. Now that the new handle post system is done, just as a test, you'll be able to see that you are able to blend between the two poses. So I will change this to grapple mouth, for example, and you can see that I'm blending between handle default and grapple mouth. Now that handle is done, I will go back to my item and I'll just update the script. So for example, remove the R on my dagger and just replace it and it'll automatically update for us. I then want to add a whoosh component and I will move this to the tip of the blade. Please note that the name is important and it'll be the whoosh script. We do not need to change this unless you want to. So now we'll make a sound when you swing the weapon about. I will then want to add another empty and name it fly direction. This is not essential. It is an optional feature. Make sure that the blue arrow means it's pointing forward. Put it to the tip of the blade. And then in the item, you can just select fly deer ref. This means that when you throw the weapon, it'll fly in that direction. Finally, if we have a dagger or a weapon that is like a sword, we want to make sure that the weighing and the balancing is accurate. For this, I will be ticking custom inertia tensor. I will tick this and it'll generate a capsule collider. I will rotate this and just make sure that it just fits the size of my weapon. This is for overall balancing and is not entirely a a required. This is only optional. For the dagger, you want to make sure the blood works on the weapon as well. So, with the Thunder Road lit shader setup, I want to add component and add reveal decal. This is the reason why the Thunder Road lit material is so important. Please note that the resolution is important. I'm going to set it to 8th as it is unnecessary to have it so high, as having it at max could can cause lag and even crashes on some lower end systems. Now I want to make sure that I add the reveal layers correctly. So under the material for dagger tutorial, I'm going to enable reveal layers, go down into my hierarchy, and I'm going to go to SDK, examples, reveal. Now I will move the red texture to the layer mask, move the 
it's really hard to see texture here to the layer zero. I will then add my weapon normal map to the layer zero R normal. Then go back to the examples folder and for the layer one, I will drag the burn texture and I will drag the burn normal. Then once I'm finished with the reveal, I untick the reveal layers and this ensures the blood works on the weapon. Now that that is done, we can now create this as a prefab. For this, I will drag the tutorial dagger down here and I'll create a prefab for me. Now I go into prefab mode. Please note that in prefab mode at the current moment, handle poses do not update. However, in prefab mode, I will be adjusting the preview. So the preview is how the item looks in the item spawner. So we want to make sure that it fits the weapon quite nicely. We can change this by editing the scale. I'm just going to rotate it to make it look a little bit nicer. I will then click generate icon and it'll generate a nice icon for me. To note, if, you, if your item is quite large, you can create another preview and use it as a close-up preview, which is the tick here. Make it smaller and just make it so it fits the handle. And it'll generate a nice close-up preview of the weapon, which you can use for the small previews in the book. However, because this is a dagger, this is not necessary and I will remove it. Now that the preview is done, it's onto the addressable building. So, I will save it. Then, I will go to Window, Asset Management, Addressables, Groups. Now, when I've got that, as you can see here, I have a lot of my addressable groups from my SDK. What I want to do, so I want to right click, create a new group, packed assets. And at the bottom, I want to just rename it to tutorial dagger. So now I have my tutorial dagger. I will go to where my prefab is, select it, go back to my addressable groups. And I want to make sure that I move the prefab and the preview to this. Just make it easier, I will drag it up here just to make it easier to see. Now that I have this, I want to make sure that the label is set to Windows for both of them. If your mod is for Quest 2, for Nomad, then you can tick the Android box. Now that it's done, I'm going to rename them to something a little bit more simple. So drags.dagger.item and drags.dagger.item.preview. Just to make my life easier, I made this in the past, so let me just delete it. So now I have this done, I'm going to go to Thunder Road SDK and Asset Bundle Builder. Now, as you see, I have my data tutorial here, but I'm going to show you how to make a new one. So you should have just the Witch Broom here at the moment. So what, I'm, what you need to do is you need to click on it and you need to duplicate it via control D. I will rename it to tutorial dagger. Go into inspector and click the little lock icon. I will change the folder name to drags dagger, uh, tutorial dagger even. And I will set the addressable asset groups to zero just for the time being. I'm gonna go back to my addressable groups, click on tutorial dagger, find that it's right here and I'm going to go back into the inspector for the dagger tutorial uh, for the tutorial dagger asset bundle group click the little plus button and I'm going to drag the tutorial dagger to the addressable asset group now that, that is ready you should see it in the asset bundle builder here make sure that your game folder directory is the blade and sorcery folder and I'm going to take the tutorial dagger and export and before I click build I want to go into addressable groups right click tutorial dagger and set as default. Now done, I can build the asset bundle group. 
They should not. Uh, for your first time building, this may take a little long. Um, however, once it's built once, it should be very quick any other time afterwards. So as you can see here, I built this in the past, so it was very quick for me. Now that this is built, I will go into my mods folder, and I will see that the tutorial dagger folder is right here. Please note that some addressable groups might export with your mod, and then we'll just delete those. You should have just your dagger or your tutorial asset all bundle and the Unity built-in shaders bundle. Now that's done, go to another mod folder. So I will, for example, I will go to my Pride Month mod that I made in the past. I will copy the manifest JSON and I will paste it in my tutorial dagger folder. I will then edit this with Notepad++ and you can use any other program as well. So I'll just change it to tutorial. Example, and make sure that the game version is set to 0 0.11.0.0, .0 as this makes it so the game can read this. We'll then save the file, and now we go on to the JSON. So, what you want to do is you want to go back to your SDK, you want to right click on Assets, Show in Explorer. So once you've opened your once it opens the asset bundle folder, you'll want to go back, back again. Oh, not not that far. And you want to go to build staging. You click on that, go to catalogs, bass, and then you want to go to items. And because I've made a dagger, I want to duplicate the dagger JSON. So what I will do is I will go down. Find the dagger common, copy it and paste it in here. I will rename it to just dagger tutorial and I will edit it with notepad++. Please remember that the names of your components in Unity is important. So for example, Blades is the name of the collider group, Pierce, Slash, and Blunt are the names of the damagers. Because I don't have a Pierce 2, I will simply remove it. Now I'm going to change the ID to Dagger Tutorial, change the localization ID to something unique, as this will be the translations. If you set it to, to Common Dagger, or Dagger Common, it will change the name of your item if it's in another language. Then the display name, I'm just going to set to tutorial dagger. I will then change the description to whatever, so example, and I will change the author to my name. Note that tier changes the way the imbue works. So if it's tier four, it'll imbue for a lot longer. The category makes it so you can find your weapon, so I recommend using some of the base game categories so you can find it easily. Now that that is done, I'm going to go back into Unity, and you can see the addressables that I used. So, I will go back into my JSON, and know that these addressable names are important. Prefab address is your weapon, so I'm going to change it to drags.dagger.item and then I'm going to just copy it and for the icon address it is the preview name so I will just name it drags.dagger.item.preview you can also add the close-up icon address if you have one now that, that is done you can change these if you wish however it is not necessary just make sure that the names of the components add up. Like 
the damages, the interactables and the whooshes, along with the collider group. The collider group ID allows you to make it so, if you wanted to, you could make this into a magic staff that shoots fireballs. That is where shoot point will be used in the collider group. Now that is done, my weapon should work in game. So I will test this now. Once I'm loaded in, you'll be able to see that your dagger is right here and it works perfectly fine. You can put it in your side as it's a dagger, take it out, use telekinesis, and most importantly, you can imbue it. This is my weapon making tutorial. I hope that it is useful to you. Thank you, and I'll see you later.